Hi everyone, Dave from Geekanoids here and I want to discuss with you in this video the Google I.O. Keynote for 2012 that happened just yesterday and also offer up my opinion on the announcements that were made. Well the Keynote kicked off with some really impressive figures. Over 400 million Google Android devices have been activated in total. Now that figure probably includes tablets, mobile phones and things like set-top media players but that is an impressive figure with over 1 million activations per day at the moment as well. So really impressive. Then they went on to actually make the latest version of Google Android 4.1, also known as Jelly Bean, actually official. So this is actually going to be available very, very soon. And some of the features in it are brilliant. They started off by discussing some optimization that they've made and they called this Project Butter. Really cool name. V-Sync and triple buffering were a couple of the things that were included. And what that does is it just dramatically increases the performance of the operating system on mobile phones and tablets. Then they went on to show a nice auto-align feature. And what this does is if you're dragging a widget onto your home screen, for example, and it doesn't quite fit, you can resize it. And the icons around the widget actually move automatically so they sort of realign themselves into the empty space very very nice feature and then at the moment on google android if you want to remove a widget or an app you have to sort of touch the screen and then drag it down into a trash can well now you just flick it off the screen so nice little touch there as well new dictionaries plus learning keyboards and what i mean by learning keyboards are where you're using things like predictive text before, they sort of did learn a little bit, but it seemed to be quite random in what words were suggested. Well, these new keyboards apparently will learn the grammar you use and the way you type to give more accurate text prediction. All good. Very, very good. And then we've got offline voice typing. Now, this seemed like a very small feature, but it's actually pretty good. At the moment, if you dictate to a mobile phone, it relies on a data connection to actually do that prediction. Well, what Google have done is they've shrunk the database down that they use for uh, voice dictation so it fits on the device itself. So no longer are you reliant on this data connection. So that's really cool. Then they moved on to demonstrating something that was so, so like Siri on iOS, where they're asking the device questions and for, for various sort of feedback. And it was just more or less identical to Siri, but... All jokes aside, it was very, very accurate, very fast in coming back with the answers, and I was impressed, so I'm very keen to try this out. Then they moved on to announce something called Google Now. Now, what Google Now does is it uses your search history, things like um, searches you've made on your web browser, location, traffic, etc., to learn about how you use your device. And this makes planning things like journeys very, very intuitive with loads of information fed back to you. Now, I'm having to refer to my notes here, but it was things like if you're traveling and you change your journey halfway through, it will actually feed back sort of local information based on how you've used search before to deliver you things like restaurant locations, um, they used an example of wanting to get a workout before you caught a flight and it feeds back all this information into one condensed screen. Really, really nice feature. Now, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean is going to be rolling out to uh, some handsets mid-July and it's going to be an over-the-air update. They did detail some of the handsets and it included the Galaxy Nexus the bad news is that in the list, very short list actually, of phones that they detailed, they didn't say anything about the Samsung Galaxy S3. So I'm assuming that because that isn't a Google Experience handset, you're going to have to wait for the update on that particular handset. Little bit of bad news, but at least it's coming mid-July. And then they went on to discuss Google Play. Now, I use Apple devices primarily, and I use the iTunes App Store to discover and download new apps. Well, Google Play is where if you've got an Android device, you'll actually go to download games, applications, music, videos, etc. The figures were very impressive. 600,000 apps and games are available on Google Play at the moment. 
That is a brilliant number and it shows how things have changed over the past couple of years. And then they also talked about smart APK updates. And what that means is if a developer makes an update to an app, instead of the whole app having to be downloaded to a device, it uses a smart update, so it only downloads what's changed. And this results in smaller files, so that's good for everyone, means less data usage. More content was added as well, including movie purchasing, TV series, and also new content partners announced, including the likes of Disney. Magazines were also launched as well, and you can purchase single magazines, you can subscribe to magazines, and they even said something about a subscription for magazines as well, where you get a 14-day trial. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but very, very keen to check that out. Then they moved on to hardware announcements, and this was what we've all been waiting for. Uh, we sort of had rumours for a few weeks building up to the event about what they were going to announce. Many of those came true, including the Google Nexus 7 tablet announced. Now, it was Asus that they partnered with, or Asus, that they partnered with to actually make this. And I'm going to run through the specifications and then give you my opinion on the Nexus 7. First of all, 7-inch screen, 1280 by 800 resolution. It's going to run Google Android 4.1 Jelly Bean out of the box, so the very latest operating system when you purchase this. A Tegra 3 quad-core CPU plus a 12-core GPU, so this thing is going to really fly for gaming. Front-facing camera, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, up to nine hours of video playback and up to 300 hours of standby. That is very impressive and it weighs in at just 340 grams. Uh, the thing that struck me when they were announcing this, and it was quite funny, I did laugh to myself, was how when the iPad was announced, a lot of Apple users and people looking on from outside of the sort of Apple world were saying it just looked like a big iPod touch. This Nexus 7 really does look like a big Galaxy Nexus mobile phone. It really does. It's very, very similar in its looks. Uh, but jokes aside, the demo looked really, really nice. Uh, the magazines that they displayed on this looked very crisp. User interface was really cool. And then they looked at this TV app and they did a demonstration of the TV app. It just looked very, very swish, very well thought out and some nice additions to the user interface. Uh, dynamic widgets as well on the home screen. This was like that for me because what dynamic widgets do is you can drag them onto your home screen or get rid of them if you don't want them, but they will make recommendations to you about new content. And it just seemed like Google pushing out ads to the device. So a little bit undecided about that one. They also, also showed the new YouTube app, which has been optimized and also talked a little bit about, about offline maps, which is available to the uh, Nexus 7 tablet and handsets that get an Android 4.1. And what offline maps does is again, similar to the voice dictation, instead of relying on a data connection to get your maps, you can actually download a whole city to the device. So then you don't need any data connection to use the navigation and to find your way around. Now pricing was the big surprise here, the base model with eight gigabytes of storage, $199 in the US, £159 in the UK. The higher model with 16 gigabytes of storage, $249 I think it was, and £199 in the UK. They got the pricing absolutely spot on. Now personally, myself, I've already pre-ordered one. It's due to ship mid-July, so not long to wait because we're already almost at the end of June, so maybe two to three weeks time to get our hands on the Nexus 7 tablet. And I'll be bringing you lots of coverage on this new device. It's really impressed me what I've seen so far just via the keynote that happened yesterday. Moving on, they announced another new device as well. It's called the Nexus Q. And what it is is a small Android powered computer uh, that you use your tablet or phone to actually control it. And you connect the Nexus Q to your TV and sound system. So you're going to connect it to your LED TV. It's got audio outs. You're going to connect it to maybe an AV amplifier or to some active speakers. And 
Once it's connected, you can then use your device to control the queue and stream content down from the cloud. So that could be movies, music, etc. And it had a really nice demonstration again where you were watching a movie on your tablet device and then you could continue where you left off on the queue on the big screen TV. So really nice demonstration. The actual specifications of this, I didn't catch too many of them, but it's got an OMAP 4460 CPU, a 25 watt amplifier built in, and you can stream music and up to 1080p video from this. So it sounds really nice. Um, it was quite big though, quite a big sort of spherical design. Um, Wi-Fi, NFC and Bluetooth built in, a micro USB port, which they said was for hacking. Really cool that they mentioned that. The UI, very, very nice, with some really cool sort of social sharing features built in as well. The only downside on the Nexus Q was the pricing, $299, US only to start with, uh, shipping July as well, but it just sounded a bit too expensive and I hate to do this in a video that's primarily talking about Google products, but when you compare that to something like the Apple TV, it's just too expensive. It's got very similar capabilities and it might have a few more bells and whistles available eventually because it's gonna be more of an open platform, but just $299 seems too much. That's gonna probably equate to around about 249 pounds. My personal opinion is they need to get it down to under 200 maybe even 149. I will still be getting one of these in to review when it becomes available in the UK, so do keep an eye out on the channel for that. That concludes the Google I.O. 2012 keynote, and my opinion on it is it was very, very exciting, very keen to get my hands on the latest operating system and, of course, the new hardware devices. Leave me some comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. I mean, after all, uh, we use a mix of different platforms. I use Apple. A lot of you guys and girls use Android as well. So just let me know how you thought the keynote came across. Are you excited about the new devices? Are you going to be trying any of them? What are you going to be ordering? And just get this discussion going. Really keen to hear back from you. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you all in the next one.